everyone, Alicia McGill here with Math Labs. Today we're looking at Content Standard 6.ns.1 of the 6th grade Common Core Standards. And we're focusing on mathematical practices 1, 2, and 4, really focusing on 4 using a visual model. Again, this is the topic um, of division of fractions, and this is in the grade 6, the number system um, Math Labs book. And just really quick, I want to make mention, don't forget, uh, this is a student consumable, so um, this is where they have, you know, all of their work shown and independent practices for homework, etc. But the QR codes, that's what's important um, because you can obviously scan those when you're at home. Students can scan them. Um, and, and remember, I'm talking to teachers and students, so these videos serve uh, two purposes here and two audiences. But um, those QR codes are important. If a kid misses class, they're absent, or they need a refresher, they can um, scan that, and then it'll come to this launch, and they can see and, and pause, and maybe they missed it in class, and they can review um, the video. So let's look at Lab 3.8, and if you would, read the objective with me in your head as I read it aloud. I can use a visual model, specifically a number line, to find quotients of fractions. Okay, and remember, quotient is the answer when you, drum roll, yes, divide. <laughs> um, remember, product is multiply, sum and difference are adding and subtracting respectively. And um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you an example with whole numbers and, and look at that number line first. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and solve a problem like 6 divided by 2 thirds and then a fraction divided by a fraction using a number line. So this is pretty cool. Um, let's just go back. Let me tap into your prior knowledge. Hopefully you had a little bit of work with number lines. Um, but let's look at this problem everyone knows the answer to. 6 divided by, well, we'll say 2. Okay? So I have here 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? And so I'm just going to label those. And here we're, again, thinking about how many groups of two are in six, right? So what we're going to do is, um, remember when you were counting in elementary school and you did like the grasshopper hops and the jumps to count, um, to add and subtract, etc. We're going to kind of do the same thing, except we're going to think about it like this. How many groups of two are in six? So every hump that we make, like every jump, one, two, that would be one time. So it would go in once, it would go in twice, and then there's another group of two, so it would be three. And you can see the quotient here, one, two, three. Um, this visual model in the number line also shows the um, inverse here, where you have three groups of two, and of course that total six. Okay, so we're going to do the same kind of idea here with counting how many groups of two? So we go one, two, there's a group, there's a group, there's a group. Same kind of idea on a number line. Okay, let's look at it with our fractions. So what we have here, and let's use this. We have six divided by two thirds. So here's our problem, six divided by two thirds. The first thing we do is we make our number line and we're starting with six. So here we have zero, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so here we have five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now our job is to think about how many groups of two-thirds go into six. So that's the meaning. Remember, that's the first part of the lab. It asks, what is the meaning? There's your complete sentence. How many groups of two-thirds are in six? And then we say the estimation, is it greater than or less than one? And we think about how two-thirds goes into two-thirds once for example, where we know two-thirds goes into six a lot of times. This is small, right? And so we're going to say it's greater than one, all right? I use um, one as my benchmark when I'm talking about quotients of fractions. Um, instead of trying to be more precise and, and getting a close answer, we'll, we'll do that kind of estimation with decimals, all right, or, or with our work in terms of like whole numbers, division, etc. when we, we start estimating, especially with decimals. But our go-to reference point, our benchmark is, is this quotient going to be greater than or less than 1? And it's greater than 1. Awesome. Now we're going to need thirds here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
You're like, I'm dancing. I'm going to dance for you now. Just kidding. Okay, so we're going to look at thirds. So we need thirds in, in order to find groups of two thirds. So what I have to do now is make my um, each hole into thirds. So I can see here one third, two thirds, three thirds, right? So I'm just going to label it one third, two thirds. And I'm going to do the same thing. So there's two tick marks here to make one, two, three parts, right? That shows thirds. So same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. Same thing here and here. And of course, we could count these thirds, right? Um, I'm all in favor for counting, especially all together. So let's count all of these together. When we get to a whole number, we're going to go, woo! Okay? So one third, two thirds, three thirds, woo! That's one. Four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, woo! That's two. We know six thirds is two. Seven thirds, eight thirds, nine thirds, woo! 10 thirds, 11 thirds, 12 thirds, woo! I kind of sound like a lunatic. 13 thirds, 14 thirds, 15 thirds, woo! 16 thirds, 17 thirds, 18 thirds, woo! Right? And we know 18 thirds is six. It's not as fun when I don't have a class of 30. I, I just kind of feel a little creepy right now, but it's all for the cause, right? Now we have our thirds, okay? And. We have six holes. I'm going to erase those just because we're going to focus on our number line here. But that was good to just count. It's important for us to count numbers and fractional numbers because we always do a lot of counting in elementary, like one, two, we count by twos, we count by fives. But I never hear everyone counting by thirds and fourths and fifths, and we need to do more of that. Okay, so when we have an opportunity to do that, we're going to do it. So now we're going to make our little jumps our humps, right, like the grasshopper, and see how many two-thirds are in six. So I'm going to, let's use green here. Grasshoppers are, well, I don't know. Are they green? Yeah, they're green. Okay. So two-thirds, one-third, two-third. There's one time, one-third, two-third. There's another two-thirds. So then we have another two-thirds, another two-thirds, one-third and one-third, another two-thirds, one-third and one-third, another two-thirds, another two-thirds another two-thirds, and another two-thirds. So I'm going to count my jumps, my humps here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is indeed my quotient. I'm going to come on this side. I don't know why I feel this is my side. Is it my good side? I don't know. But uh, this is more comfortable for me. So here, what we have is nine groups of two-thirds, right? And that's what we're figuring out, how many groups of two-thirds are in six. So we have nine. And we're going to check it using the standard algorithm. Okay, so by now we're in Math Lab 3.8. You should have discovered that in your work from 3.1 and 3.2 and 3.3 and 3.4. All right, so now this should be a piece of cake. We're going to check it where we know that division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the algorithm is you keep six the same, right? And instead of dividing by two thirds, you're multiplying by three halves, which is the reciprocal. So you have to flip the numerator and the denominator, okay? And then you multiply straight across. You can put this over a 1 if you'd like. 6 times 3 is 18. 1 times 2 is 2. And then we have this improper 18 halves. And we know that 18 divided by 2 is 9, right? And we could have also cross-canceled here. So if you're good at that and you understand that, um, you know, this is 2 and this is 3 times 2, and a pair of 2's cancel out, 2 over 2 being 1. If you understand that and you can break it up and you learn that, then you can go ahead and cross-cancel, and then you would get 3 times 3 is 9, and you wouldn't have to simplify. All right? Pretty cool. So now we're going to do a model together that involves a fraction, okay, divided by a fraction, so instead of a whole number. And it's actually less work, okay, because here we had to go all the way to 6. All right. So let's erase that, and let's look at our next example on your whiteboard. So remember, um, right now you should be getting out your whiteboards, and um, when I call your color, you're going to raise it after you're done working. I'll give you a few minutes, but um, we're going to do this one together. So let's start with this problem. 5 eighths divided by 2 eighths, okay? All right, so we're going to start with our number line, okay? But if you notice... We're starting with 5 eighths, so we're only going from 0 to 1, all right? We're not going to 6 or 10. It's 5 eighths divided by 2 eighths. I drew a crazy 5 there. I just fixed that. I was like slanted and ooh, it's like going down skiing slope here. Okay, so we need eighths. So to get eighths, we can make this number line in half. 
and then we can make halves into fourths by taking half of the half, and we can find half of the fourth, and those are eighths, right? And we can label these here, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, that's not an eighth, that's like, yeah, that's light, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, eight eighths, woo! Remember we do the eight eighths, okay, it's a whole number, all right. So, now it's different here. We have five eighths. We're not going to go all the way to eight eighths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my lime green to kind of highlight that we are looking at five eighths to start with. So you can use your highlighter or on the lab sheet, you can just shade it in with a pencil. We're going to go to five eighths right here. And this is where we're going to stop, all right? And I don't want to draw, I'm tempted to draw an arrow. But I'm just, I'm not going to draw the arrow, okay? Um, because that just indicates that it continues. So what we're going to do here is draw our humps of two eighths, all right? So we're going to see how many groups of two eighths go into five eighths. Well, here's a group of one two eighths. There's our two eighths. Here's a group of one two eighths. So, so far two. Oh, only two whole groups, right? Two whole humps here. And this is not an eighth. Even though the size is an eight, it's, we're counting how many groups. So this is a part of this group. It takes two of these eighths to make a group, and this is one out of those two. So this is actually a half of a group, all right? So that is the quotient, and that's how I want you to interpret that remainder. Now, we're going to use the standard algorithm to check and make sure that our quotient is indeed two and a half. Even though I feel really confident about my quotient, because... I have a visual model, okay? Not because my teacher said do step one, step two, you know, keep switch flip or some kind of trick. That rhymes. Um, poet and sometimes I know it. But because we're going to use a model to understand and improve and say this is why five eighths divided by two eighths is two and a half, okay? All right, that's powerful. That's rigor. So we're going to now use the standard algorithm to check and make sure that this works. So we have five eighths, and we understand that division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of two eighths is eight over two. And we could cross cancel the eights and make those one, or we can go straight across. Five times eight is 40, and eight times two is 16. This is improper, we could divide this out. 16 goes into 40 twice, that's 32. And we're left with eight left over, eight sixteenths. And that simplifies to two and a half because we know that 8 sixteenths, if we divide top and bottom by 2, 8 sixteenths is the same as a half. Okay, we can recognize that. And oh, look, that's what our model shows. So this is like the 